Um, so I'm Eric Rivkatorian. I'm the founder and CEO of Eighth Wall. Um, at Eighth Wall, we really believe that AR is for everyone, and we make developer tools to expel, help expand the reach of your AR apps. Um, you know, in doing this, we've worked with a lot of partner developers, and in the pro process, we've seen many patterns and anti-patterns that go into designing for mobile AR. Um, we've seen lots of excellent examples, but as a team, we haven't been able to shake the feeling that today's mobile AR apps remind us of the early days of mobile web. Um, you know, when the iPhone came out in 2007 with its powerful new Safari browser, um, we had all this experience on designing web pages for computers. Um, if you look on the left, that is what the Apple.com web page looked like the same year the iPhone launched. Um, the buttons are small, the images are there, it's hard to read, and 11 years of experience in mobile design has taught us when you build mobile web pages, you build something on the right. You want fewer click targets, you want big legible text, and you want clean, responsive layout for all the different sizes of screens that we've seen today. Um, you know, eighth wall succeeds when developers succeed. And one of the things we've done is we've really, we've d we did a study of what apps are in market, what mobile AR apps are really great examples of early mobile AR design. And we've tried to distill those down into a set of design insights that we can use for a style guideline. Um, there's a, a ton, ton of space and a lot of places to go here, but given that we have a 20 minute talk, I just wanted to talk about three key insights we've been able to garner that can help make your AR apps more successful. All right, ready? Mobile AR is often better without AR. Mobile AR is better when it moves you. And last one, magic wands are better than touch screens. I'll wait a second for that to sink in. Okay, mobile AR is often better without AR. You know, when we talk about mobile AR, we typically think of a camera pass-through where we see the world and we see virtual objects that sit on top of that world. Um, it turns out there are real problems with this on mobile. Uh, maybe the single biggest issue is that a typical mobile phone has a camera whose field of view is too small for most applications. Uh, people see about 120 degrees out of their eyes, and a typical mobile phone has about a 35 degree viewing angle. And so what happens is a lot of apps are built trying to figure out how do we cram all the things people want to see into this very small window. Um, it ends up making for much worse experiences than if you had a wild, wider field of view. Um, and the next one is that you know, immersion, AR is all about immersion. And immersion fails when you break the reality and the perception that an object fits this space. Um, this happens all the time in mobile AR with occlusion. Because today's technology isn't built so that if there's an object in front of the virtual object, it tends to render on top of it. And whenever this happens, it kind of breaks the illusion immediately that you're looking at something in the space around you. Um, you know, this is also paired with kind of the other cognitive dissonance that you're, you want to do something in the physical world, but the world may not look at all like what you're trying to build in your application. Um, you know, you want to have a tree growing, but it's in your kitchen, it's not on a field. You want to have a sky that's dark, but instead it's a bright day outside. And, you know, ultimately what, what this means is that you, you don't get this great immersion. And so what happens is that we've, we've looked at a lot of the apps in the space and realized that the apps that don't use the camera at all um, have fixed both of these issues. You can avoid using the camera and you can construct an entirely virtual scene for many applications. You get to choose your own field of view. You can make it a fisheye if you need to. You can make it as wide as required for your application. You'll never run into issues with occlusion and cognitive mismatch. And these kind of apps are really fun to use, and there's some great examples. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll show some videos of apps that we just identified as great examples of doing this, and I'll, I'll give a little information as we go through them. Um, yeah, if, if anyone in the room has built any of these, we really appreciate these really great examples of solid design. So Enter the Room by International Committee of the Red Cross is an immersive and emotional app where you experience the inside of a child's room in wartime. Um, notice the wide field of view on the virtual camera, which gives you sufficient perspective to explore the space around you. So Merge Blaster by Merge VR is a first-person shooter where your phone becomes the heads-up display of a gun, a toy gun. 
Um, the app uses a wide virtual field of view, but when you want to, you have a scope feature where you can actually zoom in on enemies. Um, so this dynamic field of view allows you to see the waves as they come across, but intergage. Um, Alice in Wonderland Air Quest by Avatarico is an immersive vir visual experience in the world of Lewis Carroll. And by building this app without the camera, there's no occlusions, there's no objects, and there's no cognitive dissonance as you're really exploring the space. Um, and all these really succeed at you know, bringing the fun, bringing the engagement, still bringing all of the value of mobile AR. These are six degree of freedom applications, but without having to deal with this perception problem as you match with the real world. Okay, brings me to my second point. Mobile AR is better when it moves you. You know, if you're gonna play a game of Scrabble on your cell phone, how would you do this today? I mean, you'd, you'd probably sit back on your bed or your couch, lie down and think through this puzzle and try to understand how to play this game. Um, you know, when you take that game and you now project it on a surface in front of you on a table, you ultimately turn the user into a camera. Like, they're not playing the Scrabble game, they're sitting there trying to figure out how to keep the viewport in front of them, when really that doesn't lead to the kind of any of the value that you're trying to provide them. Um, and the, the real trick here is, don't give the user chores, give them experiences. You are trying to, you know, you have all this entire new medium that allows you to do so much more in space around you, but don't do it, use it to do the things that you don't have to have happen in the space around you. Um, you know, one of the best parts about mobile AR is this is a medium that allows for fully untethered, no wires physical experience. And you should design to this strength. You know, get inspiration from games like Guitar Hero or Just Dance or Beat Saber because people like to move. And if you can bring the fun and you can integrate it into the movement, you have something that you couldn't have provided in any other you know, platform to date. So let me show some examples again of apps that have done a good job here. So Tib AR by iComs is a fast-paced mobile game where you have to collect enough Easter eggs before you run out of time. Um, while Tib this bunny tries to pelt you with rotten eggs. And if you manage to keep up, the eggs move farther and farther away and you have to catch them. Um, in the same way like Pigeon Panic where you're scaring pigeons as you go and you have to keep up with them. Um, Ghosts and Guns by Turbo Chili is a first person shooter where you are the target. You have to move out of the way of the bad guys. You have to dodge or avoid them. And if you're cornered in space, you have to run away. And these really highlight the value of making the user move around to experience these applications in a very new way. Um, going to this one, uh, you know, m magic wands are better than touch screens. Mobile AR has provided you with a new input device. Um, you shouldn't limit yourself to taps and swipes. Essentially, you're holding a magic wand. This thing can track how it moves, how it moves through space, where it goes, and it is a, a new type of input controller all by itself. And as you think through how do you build these applications, really like use this, go crazy, design your apps for this and make some magic. Um, the apps that have done this have really kind of defined the space with new experiences that go way beyond what people have seen with traditional cell phone interfaces. Some examples. Um, so the first one is, is an app called a Drive Ahead Mini Golf by Doe Dreams Fairy Tale Co. Um, unlike other AR apps and golf apps, um, your phone is the putter. So you sit here looking over the ball just as if you were in real space and you putt through these you know, incredibly interesting and intricate um, virtual spaces, but it's a lot more fun than trying to do this with your finger. Um, and there are a lot of new drawing apps, but Paint Space has especially done an excellent job of becoming a paintbrush in 3D space. You move through the world, you draw things around you, you create objects in the space and you can share them. This is a fun social app. But doing it in this form is where the van, I mean, this is so much more powerful than the kind of experiences we've seen on cell phones today using kind of traditional inter touch interfaces. Um, so, so, I mean, in summary, it's gonna be a while before the world has a generally accepted set of design guidelines for mobile AR in general. Uh, but my goal with this presentation is to help get people building better mobile AR apps today. Um, mobile AR is a brand new, an incredible opportunity to be the, one of the first innovators in the space, and the novelty of mobile AR is really a tremendous boost to adoption of your apps if you can get ahead of this today. Um, and yeah, finally, for those who aren't familiar with 8th Wall, 
We provide a developer platform that lets mobile AR apps with full six degree of freedom tracking run on any phone. Um, we remove the limitation of AR kit and we let you design and build apps that can run on close to three billion phones in market. Um, please come by our booth at the expo if you'd like to learn more and please follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. There are some questions for our speaker. Thank you very much. It was really, really interesting. Is there one? There. Bring you the mic. Hey, I, I like what you... Are we on? Yeah, I like what you said about magic wands. And, uh, you know, Harry Potter world comes to mind. And uh, sometimes we think about screens all the time, but... Uh, you know these examples that are not screen based so um do you have any other uh other examples that you uh, that come to mind with that or when we think about building ar for apps maybe sometimes the apps aren't really user facing at all you know it's funny one of the things we were doing at eighth really early days is we wanted to see what a bowling app would look like in ar um, we bowling was such a success we have these magic wands what, what do we do with them and so we created a really simple demo app where you had all the pins and you had a ball and you could like tap to throw the ball and it just wasn't that fun. I mean, the ball would like come from the ceiling and bounce and hit the pins, and it clearly wasn't, wasn't a good interaction. But what we quickly found, it was far more fun to take your phone, run up to the pins, and knock them off. Um, we put a collider on the camera, and we realized that running through the space, just knocking them down after you've missed, was like far more entertaining than throwing the ball. And I think it's these kind of examples where you realize that people really like to move, and they love this new interface. It's much more natural than trying to like interface with 3D space with your finger. And so there's, I mean, I, I imagine we'll see so much interesting use of this technology in the year to come that it's like really exciting place to be. Any other questions? Other questions? I have one. Sure. <laughs> I saw that uh, some of the examples that you, you were showing uh, in my personal opinion, are somehow no longer augmented reality because there's no real relation with any kind of real context. So when do you think you, you should stop calling augmented reality AR and start speaking about VR, for example? Uh, I mean, handheld yeah. AR. So, I mean, handheld when, VR, sorry. When I, th when I think of headsets, you know, if you put a VR headset on your face, you're completely removed from reality. Like you're in a black box. You can't see anything but what's being shown. Um, in AR, you think of pass-through plus virtual content. But mobile AR is actually very interesting because it's both. Whether you're doing you know, full, no camera pass-through or full camera pass-through, it's still you in the real world holding out your phone looking at space. And you see a 2D screen, but as you move, what you see reflects your movement. Uh, in that sense, AR and VR on mobile, I mean, mobile AR really is both. And it's this, you know, what you think of these, they, they really all happen on this device. And you can build an application where you're only seeing virtual content, but it still knows where your floor is. It could even still be adding obstacles as you go to prevent you from running into things. But you're ultimately still having this experience that's taking place in the world, and you're moving to do this. And this is kind of where I fall in this.